when I go to the center. Oh no, now I'm gonna have to spend some time programming some projectile vomiting for this. Hey everyone, my name is Paolo. This brown blur over here is Jiro. Today we're gonna do a tutorial on how to make your character look around at different like NPCs, objects of interest, all sorts of things. So first of all, let's go to the package manager and under the filter, let's select Unity Registry. This will show us all of the Unity packages. Then let's go to here to the gear, gear icon and under advanced, we're gonna select advanced project settings. I scroll down a little bit and you're gonna see enable preview packages. And what this will do is basically show us any packages that Unity is currently developing and the animation rigging, which we're gonna use for this is one of those packages. So select the animation rigging package and install it. As a basis, we'll be using the character we made in the character controller tutorial, but you can use whatever character you have. It doesn't have to be this one. There will be a couple difference depending on your asset, but I'll mention the points where you'll have to maybe do some uh, adapting based on that. So let's uh, go under Ellen and let's uh, create an empty object. And we're gonna call this head rig. Then we're gonna add a component to it called rig. As you can see, we get a little warning here and it says rig component is not a child of a game object with a rig builder component. That means that the parent, in this case, Ellen, is gonna need that rig builder component. So let's go and add it there. And right now the rig builder is essentially a list of layers, which will be the different rigs that will be applied to this um, skeleton. And the list, as you can see, is empty. So let's grab the one we just made, head rig, and just drop it in there. Now let's select the head rig, and we're gonna need to, um, to add something here for it to actually do something. So let's create an empty object under it. And under it is gonna create the multi-aim constraint. And this is what will actually make um, the head basically turn around. So let's call it uh, head aim logic. And you'll see on the settings of it, it will ask us for a constrained object, and that's the, co the object that it's gonna be moving. So in this case, we're gonna point that to um, the head of Ellen. Now, depending on the asset that you have, this is one of the important points. Um, some assets I've discovered feel better when you point at the neck. Some are better on the, some are better on the head. Some are better even on a spine bone. It really kind of depends on how the asset was initially set up. So in this case, we're going to use the head. And then in the aim axis, uh, this will also be another point that will matter. Aim axis is essentially telling us where the forward is on the on the object that we're transforming. So I know for, for a fact on this one, uh, set works really well, but I'm gonna put it to minus Y, just so that you can see how it looks broken, and then we will fix it. And in the source objects, this is what the object that we'll be looking at. So we're gonna need to create one for this. So under head rig, let's create another empty object. And let's call this one aim target. And there it is, our object. As you can see, it's kind of hard to tell where it is because it's essentially invisible. Fortunately, the animation rigging has um, an extra component here that will allow us to add um, something to visualize it. So when, with the end target selected, you can click on that plus and it'll give us an effector. Uh, it has, there's different shapes that you can put to them. Uh, you can select over here and then look for effector. And generally, I like to use this uh, sphere one. I find that this is the easiest one to see at all times. Now let's go back to our aim logic and under the source objects, let's drag and drop our aim target in there. Let's run the game. And as you can see, the, the neck is not looking great. Let's switch to the scene and then you can start moving the object around. As you can see, the head does move, but it's not looking at the object as we would hope. So if we go back to our head aim logic, basically this, in this case, it gets fixed by switching the aim axis to set. So what this will mean is depending on the asset that you're using, you might have to try a few different um, combinations of bones that you're modifying in your constrained object and the axis that you're using for them. And there we go. As we move it, you can see now she's uh, turning to look at the object. Up and down works as well. It's important to test um, all directions. As you can see, she's looking straight at it. Uh, it only looks a little weird because this particular asset has that um, idle animation on the eyes that are looking away. So it's kind of strange looking because 
you're supposed to be looking at the sphere, but she looks anywhere but the sphere because of that idle animation. So let's make uh, let's make the eyes also look at the ball. And for that, it's very easy. We're just going to duplicate the head aim logic, and let's rename it into left eye aim logic. And we just go and change the constrained object. So instead of the head, we look for left eye. And then we duplicate it again. And this time it's right eye aim logic. And the constrained object is uh, the right eye. And as you can see, the eyes are no longer darting around. And now as I move it, they're essentially looking forward towards the sphere. Depending on your asset, you may or may not need this. Most assets come without uh, any sort of eye animations, so they generally will work without having to do this extra step. But it's nice that you can see it, so you can see how easy it is to add other uh, aim logics to the same rig. If we disable the head aim logic for a moment, just so you can see just the eyes, that's what that looks like. And maybe there's a character you have where you might want uh, just the eyes to be looking around and not the, not the head. So you can see how that works. Now it's looking pretty nice, but it still has some issues. For example, if I move it behind her, as you can see, that does not look great. The M logic components actually have under settings uh, limits on how much you can turn. So you can use this once, for example, uh, let's change this to minus 70 or minus 60 to and 60. And then when I test, as you can see, her head stops turning at a certain point. The eyes continue just because we didn't put the limit on those, but uh, the head does stop turning at that point. So you might be thinking that's great, but it does have an issue that I don't like, and that's this. When you move it right behind her, uh, the head stop starts doing pretty nasty stuff. So personally, I don't like using the limits from the, from the aim, the multi-aim component, Instead, I just generally write my own code to handle that. So we'll do that in a later step. So now we have the head reacting to the target. We need to add some logic to actually move the target around. Uh, so first, we're going to add a couple scripts. First one called point of interest. And this is the one we're going to assign to any object that we might consider a point of interest. Uh, for now, it's going to be an empty object, but you could also add to it, for example, maybe a priority. Maybe you want to add some flags so you only look at it when you're outside of combat, things like that. And we're going to add the script to these purple balls and use them for testing. And then we're going to create a second script called head tracking. And this is where we're going to put all the logic for how the target should move around. And here, let's declare a list of points of interest. Let's call it POIs. And then in the start, we can do POIs equals find objects of type uh, points of interest and then turn that into a list. So finding all game objects of a type is actually kind of expensive, especially the more objects you have, the more expensive it gets. So you don't want to do this every frame. Right now we're just doing it once on the start, so it's fine for a demo. But in a real game, you probably would want to change this into something like uh, when an object is created, it goes and registers itself in some class where it says, hey, I'm a point of interest, remember me. And then your, your player would actually be checking against that list to know, hey, what are the objects? And that way you don't have to be doing a find every frame. I'm not gonna implement that in this tutorial because it would turn it into a one hour documentary. But if you are interested in those sort of design patterns or optimizations, let me know in the comments and maybe I can do a tutorial specifically about that. So in the update, we're gonna declare transform tracking equals null, and then we're gonna loop through all of our points of interest. So for each point of interest, POI, in POIs, and then we're gonna get the delta between each point of interest and ourselves. So we declare vector three delta equals POI dot transform dot position minus transform dot position. Then we compare that with a radius. If delta dot magnitude, and magnitude is the size of the vector between uh, us and the point of interest. And we say if that's less than the radius, then tracking equals POI dot transform. So we're basically saying we're gonna be tracking this POI. And then we break because we already found one. We don't need to keep checking the rest. Then on the top, we're going to declare public float radius. And for now, let's set it to 10. Now that we know the position that we're going to be looking at, we actually need to move our target to that position. So let's get access to our target first. And for that, we're going to say public transform target. And then in our update, we're going to check um, if tracking is not null. 
then we're going to set target.position equals tracking.position. So we created the class, but we actually haven't added the, the object that will use it in here. So let's go to head reg, right click, create empty. And I'm going to call this um, head tracking. And I'm going to drop this class into it. Uh, it's expecting us to assign the target. So let's just grab the same target, drop it in here. Um, and right now the position of our head tracking, as you can see, is on the floor. Uh, it's better if you put it like right in front of her face, since that's where it's going to be counting all the logic for distance and stuff like that. It's better if it's like close to where her head is. Okay, let's get close to a point of interest there. And as you can see, she's, uh, she's looking at it. She's quite interested in it. As you can see, it's a bit of a problem. Because as soon as she goes past, she's still very interested. So similarly here, she's looking now at this object. But when I go to the center, oh no, now I'm gonna have to spend some time programming some projectile vomiting for this. So I'm gonna go in a bit of a tangent here. You can actually optimize this slightly because right now it's using magnitude on the vector. And that essentially is using the Pythagorean theorem to calculate the distance between two vectors. And if you remember that from your math class, that includes a square root. And square roots are kind of expensive, so it's best to avoid them. Uh, it's very easy to change this. Essentially, all you have to do is where we do the calculation for magnitude. Instead of that, we call square magnitude, which will basically skip the, the square root. And then we just have to square our radius so that the comparison is fair between the two. Skipping the square root is really good when you're just comparing distances. You just want to know which one is bigger than the other. But it's not good if you want to do calculations based on the distance. So that works, except the head never restores back to the position. So as we go around, as you can see, that is not exactly ideal. So let's make sure the head always gets back to its original position. So we're just going to set up a, a safe position for this. So we're going to do a vector three target. And I'm going to say equals to transform dot position, which is where we are right now. And I'm going to do a plus transform dot forward, which is essentially in front of us. And I'm going to move it like maybe two meters in front of us. And then over here, I'm going to just uh, cut this out of here, paste it down here. And then I'm going to say this equals to target. And then this one, I'm going to say also target equals this. That way, if we have a tracking object, it will use this vector. But if we don't, it will have this um, fallback value. Let's give that a try. So now when we walk there, you can see she starts looking at that thing. And once we walk away, her head turns back. Not exactly ideal, but you know, it's getting there. One thing I really don't like is that right now, let's see, as I walk here, you can see her head just like snapped into position. It's like an automatic thing. So let's make that interpolate. So instead of going to target, we're going to want to interpolate. But I think before that, I'm going to rename it just to be a little clearer that this is a target position so that we don't get confused between the target and the target position. And here, instead of using target post directly, we're going to interpolate it. So vector three dot lerp. I'm going to use uh, target dot position and we're going to go to target pose. So basically, we're saying first the position we're at right now, then the position we want to be at. And then over here, we're going to pass time dot delta time. And let's add a little speed there. Maybe we add um, retarget speed. And let's declare it up here. Uh, public float retarget speed. And for now, I'm just going to set it to like a five. Okay, so let's get close to that. As you can see that now the head sort of moved to that position and then it recovers softly. I mean, obviously it looks horrible because right now we still have the, the bad rotations, but instead of being a snap, now it does it over time, which definitely looks much nicer. So now we definitely need to fix this part. <laughs> the, the snapping behind her is not exactly great. So what we're gonna use for this is under the head rig, we have a weight. And we're going to just to see how much effect the rig is going to have on the position of the head. 
So as you can see, as I lower it, she starts ignoring the ball. But if I put it halfway, like she, she tries, but she doesn't care as much. And then over here, she really cares. So we don't want to just snap it from zero to one because you'll see, for example, if I change to zero there, the head immediately snaps to the front, which doesn't look very nice. So we also want to interpolate this value. Since we're going to be modifying the rig, we're going to have to include using Unity Engine dot animations dot rigging. Then we're going to declare here a public rig, and we're going to call it head rig. Then down in the update, we're going to declare a float, and we're going to call this rig weight. And by default, let's set it to zero. And then we can say if we did find something to track, then we're going to declare it to rig weight equals one. Then down below, like I said, we're going to be interpolating this. So we're going to call this head rig dot weight equals matf dot lerp. And we're going to lerp from head rig dot weight into rig weight. And we're going to pass a time dot delta time. And then just to make it a little faster, let's multiply by two. So now let's add a check so that the head doesn't turn if the object is behind the head. And for that, we're going to have to check basically an angle. And we're going to say float angle equals vector tree dot angle. And here we're going to pass our transform dot forward, which is essentially a vector coming forward from us. And we're going to compare that to the delta. And we're going to say if the angle is less than max angle, which we haven't declared yet, but we will soon, then we can say tracking uh, POA transform. And at some point I lost the break, so let's put that back in. And then on the top, we're going to declare public float max angle, and let's set it to 90. Now back in the editor, we need to assign the head rig into the slot we made. When we go here, she starts looking at that ball. And once we're past, she stops looking and goes forward. And let's do a test with this one. There you go. She's tracking it and then she stops. So as soon as the object is out of sight, she basically stops caring about it. So we got now the functionality to look at objects. Now let's do another part, which is if there's no object to look at, make the, the head move along with the camera direction. So if the camera looks that way, I look that way. If the camera moves that way, I look that way. And that's the thing. So to accomplish this, first we need access to our camera. So we say public camera, my camera. And then down in the update, we're going to make an else. So if we don't have something that we're tracking, now we're going to copy the angle check because we're going to do one very similar. Except instead of comparing to delta, we're going to compare that to my camera dot transform dot forward. And inside of the if, we're going to declare a target pose equals my camera dot transform dot forward. And right below, we're going to declare rig weight equals one. And actually, our target position also needs to consider transform dot position. So we add it there. So let's select our head tracking object and it's expecting a camera here. So let's grab main camera and just drop it in there. Okay. So now if I look up, she looks up. If I look down, she looks down. She basically will look in whatever side I look until I go too far and then she'll come back to the center. We got one last surprise. Let's go up the stairs. What do you think it will be? Uh, write in the comments what you imagine will be at the very top of the stairs. If you guess, I'm going to be very, very impressed. <laughs> Look at this guy. <laughs> um, if you guessed uh, we had a pink uh, beholder up here, then you were totally right. And those are some impressive, impressive guessing skills. And as you can see, we did uh, a similar code as we did for her head, but we did it for just his eye. So that as you move around, he's a tracks your position. So adding this really helps make your characters feel more alive, feel more part of the world. They're like looking around, they're a little more engaged. Uh, so it's really good to add like that little sense of a living world in your game. And uh, so I hope you had a good time. I hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next one. Adios. Thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified when new videos come out. Thanks for watching.